Hello students, welcome back to MathBase Java Programming Tutorials. In this video, I'll be explaining you object passing as parameters to methods and returning object from methods. Let's see the contents introduction. And in this video, I'll explain the same program in four different ways. That is adding user defined objects, returning user defined objects, subtracting this operator, and instance method adding user defined objects. Let's see the contents. Passing objects as parameters uses call by reference or pass by reference concept, which I have explained in the previous video. And in this video, mainly we consider time class, which has two instance variables, hours and minutes. Apart from these instance variables or member variables, Four member methods are there, read, display, add or subtract and main method. Now read reads hours and minutes, display minutes and hours will be displayed, add or subtract adds two objects or subtracts the contents of two objects and main method calls all these methods. Now let's understand a bit about add or subtract method. The very first program adds two objects by taking two parameters of time class, let's say x and y, and prints in the same method, but it is a static method. Second program talks about adding two objects, x and y, returning the resultant object to the main method. The method is static. Third program, has a method called subtract which receives two objects as parameters and subtracts the contents of the objects. This is also static method. But fourth method in the fourth program is an instance method adds objects by sending only one parameter. Why? Because instance methods called from the object. So, we are calling from x object or y object, then we don't need to send two parameters x dot add y. This can be done. So let's see the program one adding user defined object. Let's see there is a scenario in which starting time of an aeroplane is 6 10 am. Journey time is 2 hours and 55 minutes. We need to find the reaching time. That is 610 plus 255 is equal to 905. So in which we have to create a class called time with two instance variables. One is hours and second one is minutes. Now the read method, display method, main method and a static void add method which is receiving two time objects let's say time a b first object is the starting time second object is journey time now let's see the program program one so class time one in which there are two instance variables h and m there are four methods. One is main, second one is read, third one is display, fourth one is add. We are actually concerned about this particular method which is receiving two objects as parameters. Now let's understand main method. We are creating two objects x and y. See the picture. x has two instance variables that are h and m. y also has h and m. Because of time one, the constructor, it is assigning zero and zero to hours and minutes of two objects. Now, x dot read means go to x area and call the read method. So, read method is called six and ten are the parameters which are actual parameters. Six will be stored in h1, ten will be stored in m1. Now, x dot read. So, in the x area, h variable gets the contents h1 that is 6 and m gets the contents of m1 that is 6 
10. So x object has 6 and 10 now. Then y dot read, go to y area, send 255. So similar thing will happen, 255. Now add x, y. This is a static method. Add method is a static method. So we are directly calling, not with the help of any object. Now x and y are parameters, but x and y are objects. So pass by reference will happen. That means address will go get stored. Now in add method, x has an alias name A, y has an alias name B. Let's see the next slide. Now see the program static void add time 1 A object, which is an alias name to X time 1 B, alias name to Y. So in add method, we call as A and B. This we know already in the main method, we have given 6 hours 10 minutes and 2 hours 55 minutes. We want to add them. How to add them? A dot H plus B dot H. That is 6 hours plus 2 hours is equal to 8 hours. And then A dot M plus B dot M. That is 10 plus 55. That is equal to 65. This particular answer we want to store in a temporary variable. So time 1, that is class, another object we are creating new time one so temp see the picture as a hours and minutes zero zero now temp dot h in that area store whatever is there in a dot h plus b dot h that is equal to six plus two is eight and again temp dot m is equal to a dot m that is ten plus b dot m that is fifty five is equal to 65. So after these two statements, our temp object has 8 and 65. But this is not a correct program because 65 minutes is not correct. Minutes greater than or equal to 60 is equivalent to 1 hour. So we have to, as a good programmer, we have to display proper 9 hours in 55 minutes. Sorry. So, if at all, temp.m, temp.m is greater than or equal to 60. Yes, true. Then update temp.h as well as temp.m. How do we update? We take the quotient. That is, division operator always gives quotient. So, temp.m divided by 60 is 1. But already 8 is there in temp.h. So, we use plus equals to operator. Means whatever is there in temp.h, that is 8, plus this temp.m divided by 60, that is 1, is equal to 9. And then temp.m should be modified. We did not touch that, just temporarily we used it. Now we are trying to modify temp.m equals to whatever is there in temp.m, that is 65, modulo 60 that is 5 remainder now our object will be 9 hours 5 minutes so at the end of the program since it is a void method temp dot display this we are calling so it goes to temporary area and displays whatever is there in that particular object that is 9 hours 5 minutes let's see the same program in java environment Let's see the contents of time one class, which has H and M hours and minutes. Read method is reading. Display method is displaying. Now let's see main method. Two objects are created, X and Y. X dot read, six hours, 10 minutes, which is departure time. And Y dot read, two hours, 55 minutes, which is journey time. And we are printing both of them. Departure time, X dot display journey time y dot disk and calling a static method add with by sending two objects as parameters pass by reference now control will be shifted to add method 
the same program created a temp variable hours are updated minutes are updated but here if minutes are greater than equals to 60 again little bit modified by using division and quotient operators since this is a void method we are printing the output here only reaching time is temp dot disp let's execute the program and see the output See, this is, both of them are static methods. That's why they are here, both of them. Had it been private method, add method is private, it will not be visible here. Now main, okay. Departure time is 6 hours, 10 minutes. Journey time is 2 hours, 55 minutes. And reaching time is 9 hours, 5 minutes. This is a static method and this void method displaying the output in the same method by taking two objects as parameters. Now let's see second program which has a method and returns a user defined object. Starting time same 6 or 10 minutes. Journey time 2 hours and 55 minutes. Reaching time 9.05 and time with the two instance variables, static time. It's not a void method. So taking two objects as parameters and returning one object. Now, how to write this program? We know read method. We know display method. And main method, if you see, time2 is the class name. So x and y objects are created time to z is equal to new time to we created a third object because the add method is returning now x dot read y dot read but in the main method we have a statement little bit changed what is it z is equal to add x comma y x and y are parameters starting and journey time and the method add is written in such a way that it returns a value that to an object of the same class. So static void is replaced by static time 2. Okay. Now let's see the add method which is returning an object time 2. So x is known as a, y is known as b in add method. Already 6, 10, 2, 55, that is departure time and uh, journey time are stored. Creating a temp object. Now the same contents, but at the end, we are saying return temp. We are not printing. We are just returning the temporary object after doing all the calculation. That is temp.h is equal to a.h, b.h, then a.m plus b.m. If at all temp.m greater than or equals to 60, the same program, same program, but at the end, we are just returning. It's not a void method. Let's see this program in the Java environment. Now let's see the contents of time2 class. H and M instance variables, read method, display method. Let's see main method. Time2 x, time2 y. Two objects are created. And then red departure time 610 and y dot read that is journey time and then calling add method. Add method is taking two parameters here but returning time to returning time to object here. So after calling add method by sending two parameters, this method is written in such a way it is returning. So time to class z variable we have created and calling add method. So whatever is returned from this particular method will get stored in z. 
So x is departure time, departure time, x dot disp. So from x area, display. Journey time, y dot disp. Reaching time, z dot disp. So from here, the control will go to add. And x is a, y is b, alias names. Now the same program, temp.m is equal to a dot m plus b dot m. If at all greater than 60, modify. And then temp.h is equal to temp.h plus a dot h, b dot h. The, this statement I have written at the end. Anyway, we can write. And then return temp. So, this return temp, whatever is there, will be stored in Z. This is returning objects. Control K. Let's execute this program. Time to main method. Okay. So it is saying departure time 610, journey time 255, reaching time is 95, which is returned from the add method. This is the second program. Let's see the third program, subtracting user-defined objects. Here, starting time of an aeroplane is 610 and we know reaching time, that is 905. We need to find journey time. That means reaching time should be minus 6.10 a.m. That is, departure time should be subtracted from reaching time. Subtraction. That means x and y are objects are there. y minus x or a, b are there. b minus a. Now, time 3 class. Read method is there. Static void subtract. Not returning anything. Time 3 class A and B, it is accepting starting time and reaching time, not the journey time. So, let's see the program. Now, time 3 class has a method subtract and it is a void method and a static method. Already, Y has 9, 5, that is the reaching time. And x has 610, that is starting time. So, temporary object we have taken and we are taking one journey variable. What is it? Journey variable. What we are doing is b dot h into 60 plus b dot m. That, are, that is 545 minutes. Minus a dot h into 60, that is hours into 60, plus a dot minutes, total 370 minutes. So, we are doing 545 minus 370 is equal to 175 minutes. Now, what we are doing is temp dot h is equal to journey divided by 60, temp dot m is equal to journey modulo 60. Instead of borrowing and all those things, we have taken a temporary variable journey, which is taking the total minutes of B object minus total minutes of A object. And then temporary object has two hours 55 minutes because of the code. And then temp dot this. Why? Because it is a void method, not returning anything. Let's see the program in the Java environment. So, time 3, read display method, void subtract, time A, time B, but B dot H multiplied by 60 plus B dot M, A dot H multiplied by 60 plus A dot M, and the journey time divided by 60 is hours, journey time modulo 60 is minutes and temp dot disp. In the main method created two objects x dot read y dot read and then departure time is x dot disp and journey reaching time is disp y dot disp 
and the journey time in the subtract method is temp.disp. So let's execute this program. Okay. Departure time 610, reaching time 95, journey time is 2 hours 55 minutes. This is about subtracting objects. Let's understand operator this. The operator this refers to the object from where a method is called. For example, x dot display, y dot display. If you see void display, the contents, system dot out dot print ln, this dot h means if I call from x, this refers to x. If I call from y, this refers to y. This concept we use in the next statement and in the next program that is x dot add y. If add is an instance method, we need to call from an object. So if at all I am calling from x, I don't need to send x as a parameter because anyway the control will be at x. So the instance method add can be written in such a way it receives only one parameter that is b and y. So x dot add control is at x. So I can either say this dot h to refer x or just h also. But operator this is a possibility and as a student you should understand what is this. Let's see the fourth program now. Same program, starting time, journey time, reaching time, we want to find out. But this add method is just void method, no static instance method. So add method should be called from an instance. In that case, no need of sending two parameters. One from one object we will be calling second object as a parameter we will send. Let's see the program. Class time for H and M are there and other methods are also there. Public static void main if you see x dot add y. This is how we call because it is not a static method. Now in add method we are receiving only one parameter. And this refers to x. See the picture. b refers to y. Now we are creating a temp variable. Same program temp dot h is equal to this dot h or just h also is okay plus b dot h. This means from x add method is called so it refers to x. Now temp dot m is equal to this dot m plus b dot m and rest of the program is same temp dot display. So calling a method from an object may require only one object as parameter. Even if you send two parameters, it's okay, no problems. As a programmer, you can do anything and everything. So, this is about instance method calling. Let's see the same program in the Java environment. Let me rewrite this static method. As and when we write, couple of errors will be shown. This is not static according to us. Immediately, it gives an error. Control K says non-static method cannot be called. So, we will say x dot add from instance, it should be called. Fine. But if I am calling from x dot add, y sending x again? So, I just send y. In that case, it gives an error here. Why? Because we are sending only one parameter and here two parameters are there. So, time for control K. Here again one more problem. 
because there is no a here only b is there this is x object so we either remove we remove this a dot h a dot h so we remove that and a dot m we remove then control k it works or we can say this dot h and this dot m we can say like this also over here also we can say this dot h this dot m so from x if it is called this refers to x only or you may not write control k no errors this is how we create or call an instance method let's execute the answer would be the same anyway departure time journey time and reaching time this we have understood here is a practice exercise for you create a class called distance with the following specifications member variables are kilometers and meters kilometers and meters methods are read display main and static method which adds two distance objects and second one is height method height class with feet and inches which adds 2 feet and 2 inches but this is an instance method so you will call x dot add y only one parameter you said that is fourth program type and then create a class called distance 1 with the following specifications return object concept so distance 1 will be returned from add method and kilometers meters only two distance objects distance 1 distance 1 x y or a b passed as parameters and returns an object please do practice these programs so that you understand better that is passing objects as parameters as well as returning refer chapter 3 of essentials of computer applications for further understanding and practice exercises and the next video is about constructors in Java. Thank you.